<clears throat> so a little bit about something Walmart. Uh, this is 2004, this is from season eight. Again, you know, what we have here is another libertarian view at um, corporations or of corporations, right? Where basically South Park is like, we're going to boycott Walmart, but they can't help themselves, right? They cannot help themselves to all the great deals, right? They cannot stay away. And um, I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's simple economics, son. I don't understand it at all, but God, God, I love it, right? When they're trying to figure out how things are so cheap at Walmart. They don't understand, you know, economies of scale and concepts, concepts like, like that. Um, but this episode, yeah, they, they kind of get into, like, this general sense of, like, people, like, protesting um, corporations like this when they come, in, come into a town. We have a lot of, like, parodies of horror films um, and, and some, like, carnivalesque here, obviously, with, like, <laughs> when you die, you shit yourself, and the Walmart dies, and it shits. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, Jim's drugs, okay? Um, but I think the important thing is, you know, like, what's the heart of Walmart? It's us. It's us consumers. Who makes Walmart? It's us. Like, who keeps Walmart alive? It's us. It's our choices. Like, if we want the Walmart dead, we need to not shop there. You know, so it's a pretty interesting take on it. And again, like, see the same thing with Jim's drugs. You know, it gets too big, and then they have, they have, to, burn, they have to burn it down to kill it, you know. South Park proclaims the sovereignty of the consumer in a market economy. And sovereignty meaning we have a choice. No one forces us to shop or buy anything. We make those choices to support certain companies and brands. And those are our choices. Okay? We're not forced to do that. And that's what they explore under libertarian philosophy and economics. Okay? Um, Here's another quote, right? South Park doesn't simply defend the free market in its episodes. It is living proof of how markets work to create something of artistic value and in the process benefit producers and consumers alike. That is, like South Park is itself like the byproduct of a free market. You know, the reason why South Park is there is because we fucking watch it, because we consume it, because Comedy Central can sell ads to companies when South Park runs because of us, because our eyes are tuned in or, you know, whatever. Um, so that's kind of like what, what they're trying to say there. So lastly, okay, so hopefully you get an idea of what, of what libertarian economic philosophy and libertarianism is. Um, again, we're just kind of like dipping into it, and it really, I think the more you kind of get a little bit of a grasp of it, you'll see when you watch future South Park episodes, maybe you'll see past the poop and puke and all that stuff, and you'll, you'll see a little bit of like how their ideolo ideology as creators and about consumerism and corporate behavior, politics, uh, regulation, all that stuff manifests in a libertarian philosophy. So we're going to end with The Ring. This is uh, one of my favorite episodes. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, let's, we're going to watch this and kind of just leave you with this, but I want you to think about like how Disney's represented in this episode and how it's represented through um, the character Mickey, and specifically Disney's corporate control and um, profit motive, right? And how they're willing to mask and sell sex to little, um, to little girls. I love the whole thing with the Jonas Brothers. If you watch the creator commentary, you know, Matt and Trey were so, so shocked that, um, you know, the Jonas Brothers were literally spraying girls with their hot foam um, at concerts. And so like a lot of this stuff comes from actually one of the Jonas Brothers uh, tours from around, from around that time. Um, and I, we'll, we'll pop in a little clip, of, a clip of that. Um, but yeah, it was a parody of the poster is a parody of the Jonas Brothers 3D concert, um, experience. And we have a large parody of the Walt Disney company here and it's family, it's family values. And what maybe is it really selling to people? How does it control its employees, right? The Jonas Brothers are employees of the, um, Disney company. Ha <laughs> ha! You know, um, so, and also, like, here's another interesting episode, though, where, like, they kind of attack a company for it being, you know, greedy and willing to exploit, you know, um, Christian values. And I, th I think that's important, you know, because, again, like, if a, for, for a show that's very pro 
corporation in so many ways. Here they, they tend to go after specific corporations that they think like deserve it. Like they think a company like Disney really deserves it because they, they, they see how like Disney's trying to sell these certain things to groups of people, how they mask it, how they sell certain ideas, but they also um, mask that and sort of, you know, disnify what they're trying to sell to you. So just pay attention to moments of satire and intertextuality uh, in this episode as well. And just a little bit about the Walt Disney Company. Um, I just love it. Like, yeah, I love the end of this where Mickey goes nuts and has to go back to Valhalla. But um, the Walt Disney Company, as of last year, was a $70 billion company. It's $70 billion in revenues. And that's up $10 billion. This is estimated from the year before. That's insane. That's a freaking shit ton of money. But I mean, they own everything. Film, theaters, uh, I mean, film studios, theme parks, um, mobile companies. They have like their, Disney has its own freaking, um, you know, towns, uh, radio broadcasting, publishing, cable TV, you know, record labels. I mean, they have like, they have everything. They're very vertically integrated horizontally integrated and diversified company, but they're also the most profitable media company in the world. $30 billion last year. That's almost like 40% of its revenues from last year were profit. Okay. It's going to be bad this year. (laughs) Real bad. Um, But some of their primary intellectual properties, that they own are ESPN, ABC, uh, Pixar, Marvel, and then obviously the recent acquisition of Lucasfilm. So let's watch this. Let's just think about corporate control, how um, uh, Walt Disney's painted as, you know, a very controlling company, a manipulative company, and how this, how does this fit in with their whole libertarian philosophy, or does it, how does it run a grain against it? And that's that. Uh, that's corporations in control. We got an exam next week. The reviews, uh, the exam reviews are up. The exam's on Monday. So, um, you know, definitely get it together. (laughs) Uh, Hope you're great. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, Love y'all. Take care of yourselves and your friends and your family and whoever. And uh, yeah, we'll check you on the flip. It's the real Dr. Dre. I'm out. Peace.